So I got the frame and a few of the other parts sandblasted so that I could see the condition without the paint. And actually this frame is better than the other two that I've had. Um, actually after the sandblasting there wasn't any there wasn't any noticeable holes. There's just two dents here that I'm working out so I'm just heating up the area and uh, I just have this little hammer here that I'm using the rounded edge to, to try to pound on. So I'm planning on going the powder coat route so I can't use any fillers or anything. I need to actually make sure that the metal is shaped correctly because when they heat it up in their uh, oven, I think it's around 400 degrees, uh, the bond or something similar usually would melt off. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish banging this out and then get this to the powder coater tomorrow morning. So I've started doing some work on this engine, getting it ready for once the frame gets back from the powder coater. Uh, I took off the intake manifold and the carburetor. The carb I'm actually not gonna even use. The intake manifold needs to be cleaned up and it was missing most of the gaskets. There's also some leaks coming from the top cap here and the side cap. Both of those gaskets look in bad shape, so I ordered new gaskets there. Um, the engine halves also, I noticed, weren't torqued down correctly. The torque value is supposed to be to about seven or eight foot-pounds and it looked like it wasn't even torqued down to three or four so uh, there's also some leak down the middle of the case I got that adjusted too but uh, there's leaking coming from the seal here which I've ordered a new one for but I also want to replace the clutch anyway to work on this engine though having it on the ground is kind of difficult so I wanted to build a motor stand I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube with folks working on this engine just with some two by fours set up so that you can wedge it in different angles correctly So that was pretty simple and now provides me the support I need to work on the engine. I can articulate it in a few different ways, not worry about scratching up the finish too much, and now allows me to take off the clutch cover and do some of the other work that I want to do without having to buy an expensive engine mount. So I got the frame back from the powder coater. I went with the uh, candy blue color. Uh, this was actually a powder coat, so it's not exactly candy blue. In the garage here, even with the lights that I've got on, it doesn't look as light as it does in the sun it's actually really close to the candy blue color. I went back and forth whether I do an actual paint or uh, the powder coat and, and land on the powder coat. The best painting option I saw was actually from Trail Buddy where they would do an authentic uh, candy color and it was pretty pricey. They started at $600 uh, to do the painting for these pieces here um, and then it was also about $200 shipping return plus I'd have to ship it to them for about $100. So, in the end, it'd probably get me close to $1,000 if I did the authentic. Who knows, I may do that on a future build, but in this case, the powder coater that I used had a color called transparent blue that was very close. And again, I love the way that it comes out because the powder coating is pretty forgiving and it fills in minor imperfections uh, really well. So on this build, the frame was actually in great condition and it didn't require any welding like the, 
the previous one did. So I had them powder, I had them sandblast the whole bike first. Then I um, took a look at everything. There was a couple of dents that I, I tried to pound out. You can still, I can feel just the smallest bit of them there. But again, the powder coating being a bit forgiving really fills in some of those errors. So really happy with the way that the finish of this came out. So the garage is a bit of a mess as I really just dove into this project. Kind of have different things going on all over the place and I haven't done a good job of doing step by step of the different things I'm doing because a lot of the things are the same uh, steps that I've taken on the, the first two bike builds. Uh, one thing that is a little bit different though is that I've dug into this motor, pulled off the clutch, and I'm changing the clutch plates. Uh, I actually need to wait for these to arrive. I'd ordered an, an entire clutch assembly but it was for I think the 18 tooth sprocket and I have the 17 tooth so that didn't fit. So I decided just to pop this open and uh, replace the clutch plates. I'll kind of, I'll probably detail putting this thing back together. The steps are actually pretty straightforward. And then down here I've got the frame itself. Again, the powder coating came out fantastic. Uh, I have the forks mostly assembled. Uh, on this leg I realized that I was missing the uh, plastic. And when I put it inside of the shock tube as you compress it, you could kind of feel it bouncing around. So I went ahead and uh, put that in my next order so that'll be here soon and the fork assembly will be done. And so I still have everything to assemble here. And then all of the parts that are of aluminum color, I sprayed in that VHT aluminum spray paint and I also this time used a clear coat. And they all came out really nice. I'm really pleased with uh, the finish on all of these pieces. So everything that was aluminum previously uh, now has this nice gloss aluminum finish. Got all the different pieces here. So I'm gonna let this dry for a few days. I'm actually on travel next week, so that gives a chance for these pieces to dry and for the rest of the parts to arrive. So on this build, instead of buying individual bolts when I find that I need them from Ace Hardware, where they're particularly expensive, I went ahead and uh, found a vendor on eBay that sells stainless steel bolts and bought them in the various sizes that I'll need. So uh, quite a few bolts that are required in the M6 size. The 16 millimeter seems to be the most common uh, that I used on the last build. The M6 by 10 millimeter bolts, these are the ones that go on the wheel halves. And there's a few other places that these are required, like the rear seat latch and a few others. So I got as many of those as I needed. The split lock washers in the M6 size are for the back side of the wheel halves. Of course, regular uh, nuts and the regular flat washers are used in various places. And then I also got some of the M8 bolts. Uh, there's a few places these are used. Uh, just Thinking from memory, I know the bracket that holds the seat and the gas tank cover uh, is one. Um, and there are a few other that aren't coming to mind, but I did buy those in the 25 millimeter length, as well as uh, some flat washers in the M8 size. So I finally got the new clutch plates and was getting ready to put it in and then realized that there's apparently two types of clutch plates that go into these clutches. So the center plate that I had on the clutch that came on the bike has friction material on both sides and then the clutch plates have friction material on one side and are metal on the other side. The clutch plates that I received which were supposed to be the correct ones for my 1969 engine uh, have clutch material on both sides of this plate which wouldn't make sense because then I'd have clutch material against clutch material um, which is no good. So I called up CHP Motorsports and let them know what I was trying to figure out. Cool Guy Chad explained to me that uh, in the earlier bikes, which this one is, being one of the first, um, they had clutch material on both sides and the center plate was more like this one where it's steel on both sides. Uh, I guess later on Honda changed it. He was saying that the motor oils that they used previously uh, made it such that it would put too much pressure on the center plate being all steel, uh, but with the wet clutch protection and detergents they have in current motor oils, uh, the old style which was designed for this motor will work Fine. He said that the two types are interchangeable, but since I already have these new clutch plates, and actually I have an order that's shipping out today from CHP, I just paid the $10 to have them send me the original clutch plate center uh, that is steel on both sides so that it'll go dual surface clutch plate, then all steel center plate, and then clutch plate, um, and then I should be good. But anyway, I'll have to wait a few more days until I get my next CHP order to finish this clutch assembly build. So among the other pieces I received, this replacement for the collet that 
holds the two halves of the shock together. Um, the piece that I was missing was the plastic outer ring that goes around this that I think prevents the tube from going back and forth because when I try to assemble it without it, as I compress the shock, I could feel the springs hitting the side walls of the, of the shock tube. Um, I thought it was a separate part, but it's actually all one assembly. And it's neat, these are OEM Honda parts. So this is the piece that I need and this is the piece that it's replacing. So the assembly for this is this piece first, then this. Let's get a piece of wood here to combine the two. Line up the holes. All right, and that's locked into place. So the pieces here go the shock gator, this coupling inside is a gasket, then this plastic piece, and the piece that I just purchased that holds the two together with a pin through it, and then the rest of the shock assembly. I already have these threads nice and greased up. And then this just threads on. The threads are very fine. It takes a while to get them all the way up. You need to clock the positioning of this shock so that it lines up with the indentation on the top here. So now I have the triple tree. It goes over here. the bolts that screw into each shock and then washer and nut. I actually have a brand new nut since this one has a lot of uh, rust starting to show through. Again, an OEM Honda piece. The washer that I have here though works fine but has a bit of rust on it so I'm going to clean this up first uh, before I do a final assembly with these pieces but then that should complete the front fork portion uh, of the build. For some of these bolts, like the ones that go on the reverse side of the wheel halves and that are effectively captured by the shape of the other side of the wheel half, uh, I go ahead and just refinish them and then spray a clear coat on them so that they don't rust. But in this case, you can see the rust here. A good wire wheel shines it up really nicely and then a shot of clear coat helps protect it. So I'm expecting this build series to go by pretty quickly. I now have all the parts either here in the garage or on order and should have them in the next couple of days. Also having built this bike now a couple of times before, I'm pretty familiar with all the intricacies of how it all goes together and I'm not expecting any surprises. That said, I'm really happy with the, how the bike has come together so far. I absolutely love this finish um, and the finishing that I've done on all the other parts I think is going to come out really sharp. I'm also excited for the first time to have a bike that runs the actual original 72cc engine, something that I haven't had before and I think will uh, really pull the finish of this bike looking authentic together. So stay tuned for the next few videos. Thanks everybody for watching.